Hey, that tuber. The older pole again. Just smoking some haunted bookshop in uh, one of my Blake, my bulldogs. And I'm out for a mushroom forage today. So I've come to a place which I come to fairly regularly to look for mushrooms. I've been looking for a couple of years now in this area for a very particular kind of mushroom that everything about this place tells me should be here and I haven't found it yet. So this is a hopefully a quick video. I'll try not to run out of space this time as I just have on foraging. So the tree people amongst you will notice that I'm standing underneath a beech tree. And most of the woodland in this area is dominated in the canopy by beech. So underneath beech I would expect to find certain kinds of mushrooms. And one in particular that I'm looking for, the Horn of Plenty, um, or uh, Cretellus cornicopoides give it its Latin name. Should be here, but as I say, it isn't. So one of the things with foraging is knowing, uh, foraging for mushrooms, is knowing where to find them and what kind of trees are associated with the species that you're looking for. And uh, now mushrooms have this great relationship with trees uh, and trees with mushroom, mushrooms, this symbiotic relationship whereby the um, the mycorrhizae of the mushroom that grows underneath the ground, these little filaments, um, they're actually wrapped around effectively the tree roots and they exchange nutrients um, to, to condense it down into uh, uh, a bite-sized bit of science. Uh, what happens is the tree uh, manages to get some of the minerals that it can't ordinarily uptake through its root systems from the fungi and the fungi in turn get sugars from the trees. So they've got this mutual relationship, which means that when you go out looking for mushrooms, you need to also be able to identify the trees that they're growing on, or around, or where you would expect to find those species. So, um, uh, just to give you a couple of examples, this mushroom here, this one is associated with beech. You always find it in beech woodland. Um, and this is from a family called the Russellers, or the Brittle Gills. Um, and they call these the Brittle Gills because if you can see those gills there, when you run your finger along them, they just break off really, really easily. But that one's actually a poisonous one. It's called a sickener. And if you eat it, oddly enough, it'll make you very sick. But what you also find are these little ones. Now these are exactly the same family, the russulas, also the brittle gills. This one's a bit old and manky. You see those gills just coming off there. This is our, the yellow swamp russula and this is one you can actually eat and it's very very tasty, one of my favourites in fact. So when you're out mushroom foraging it's as important to know the trees that you're looking at or the trees that you're looking under as anything else. Now a lot of people get put off mushroom foraging because they think it's big and scary and you know, mushrooms are dangerous and so on. And it's true, some are, yes. But there are a few simple rules, really, that you can uh, you can use to avoid getting yourself into a nasty situation. First and foremost, know exactly what it is you're looking for. And if you don't know 110% what it is that you're uh, putting in your basket, you leave it alone. Fortunately, things like these brittle gills and as I say, that one's quite distinctive, yellow, but also the uh, the brittle gills. Um, those are quite an that's quite an identifying feature. So, that particular family, uh, the russulas, actually there's hundreds of species. There's a couple of hundred species of russulas in this country, so they're probably not the best example to use. But another one, I found a very old and knackered example of here. Um, this is the one which all the restaurants want. This is the Puccini, 
or Bolita sedulus, also called the penny bun or the sep. And if you'll notice underneath there, now this has been eaten by a lot of slugs, that doesn't even have gills, that's actually got a spongy layer underneath, which is a very distinctive feature of all of this family. Now pretty much the only members of this family that you can't eat will tell you that you can't eat them because they're a really lurid colour, um, or they're bright red, or they're very, very striking, and they, they are pretty much nature's uh, way of screaming, don't eat me. This one, although it's a bit knackered, I'm going to take that home and dry that because that'll be fine. That'll be absolutely fine. Now another one which I've just come across walking here at the moment is this one here. Now this one is from a family called the Amanitas. And the Amanitas all grow out of a volval sac from the base like that. Now this family, the Amanitas, is actually the most deadly family of fungi that we've got, contains, so the deadliest fungi that we've got rather, but this is actually an edible variety of one. God, it's dripping. Juicy, look at that. Um, so this one's actually a, a, what we call a grisette, and one of the identifying features, if this camera will pick it up, yeah, you can just see along the margin of the cap, it's almost got these this sort of rough toothy edge which is quite distinctive. But again, this is a prime example of if you don't know what it is, you leave it the heck alone. Because if you get it wrong with this family, you are not going to come away with it. Uh, get away with it, believe me. Very, very nasty way to go if you pick the, um, the death cap. Which is this guy's older, uglier, meaner brother. So... Get yourself a decent book. Get out there and look at the environment and get to know the environment where you're going to find these fungi. And it's actually a lot of fun. I'm going to wrap this video up right here because I'm a bit concerned I might run out of camera space um, since I uploaded to iOS 10 the other day. My video storage facility has just gone right through the floor. So Anyway, Peace out, folks. See you soon. Have a great weekend.